Hi, my name is Adrian Savobo from Enox Key Club, and today we are going to be reading Geronimo Stilton and the Peculiar Pumpkin Thief. This is the Rodents Gazette editorial staff where Geronimo Stilton works. The greatest Halloween party ever. It was a cold, rainy October night. On the streets of Nemo City, the howling wind threatened to rip my favorite cheese-colored umbrella right out of my paws. Rat whiskers! How I wished I were home relaxing in my comfy cat fur slippers. Instead, I was heading downtown to, oops, I did it again. When will I ever remember to introduce myself? My name is Stilton, Geronimo Stilton. I am the publisher of the Rodents Gazette, the most famous newspaper on Mouse Island. Anyway, or was I? Oh yes! I was heading downtown to meet my favorite nephew, Benjamin. It was only a few days until Halloween, and I had promised him I would throw a Halloween party at my house. We would invite all of his friends. Ready to go shopping for the party? I asked the little mouse. Benjamin's smile made me forget all about the dreary weather. This is going to be the greatest Halloween party ever, he squeaked. You're the best, Uncle Geronimo. Did I mention I have the sweetest nephew on the planet? <laughs> yoo -hoo. I took Benjamin to Tricks for Tales, the most popular party store in New Mouse City. It has lots of decorations, weird gadgets, and party pranks. When we entered the store, we were greeted by the owner, Paws Prankster. One thing you should know about Paws, he loves to test his pranks on unsuspecting customers. Of course, today was no exception. Like my ring, he googled, waving his paw in my face. I took a closer look, and a stream of water squirted me in the snout. Cheese in the butts! Gotcha, Paws guffaw. Look at this, uncle, Benjamin said, pointing to a humongous orange pumpkin. I had to admit, it was pretty impressive. But why had someone left a banana peel on top of the pumpkin? How strange. Benjamin found a rack with lots of scary costumes. He tried on a ghost, an alien, and a skeleton costume. They were all so spooky, we couldn't decide. We decided to think it over and come back in a few days. We were about to leave when I felt someone, or something, tug on my tail. I turn around, but there was no one there. How odd. I took another step. Again, I felt a tug on my tail. Here is a short little scene from the story at this moment, and it's a pretty cute scene if I do say so myself. I whirled around fast, but no one was there. How weird. A rubber bat dangling from the ceiling stared at me with evil eyes. Yikes! I was beginning to get the creeps. At that moment, the giant pumpkin began to move. Yoo-hoo! A voice whispered. Suddenly, a furry gray snout popped out of the pumpkin. Like my little joke, Stilton? The mouse giggled. I should have known. It was my friend. Hercule Paul Rat, the famous detective. Hercule loves to play pranks, and he's always eating bananas. Stilton, I could really use your help solving a Halloween mystery, he began, but I cut him off. Hercule loved to get me to help with his crazy cases, but... I wasn't about to get involved. I had a Halloween party to plan. Sorry, Hercule, no time, I said quickly. Then I took Benjamin by the paw and ran out the door before Hercule could stop me. If you've seen these pumpkins. The next day, I went back to Treats for Tales. I was going to buy the giant jack-o'-lantern and a few other scary decorations to surprise Benjamin. But when I got there, there was Nothing left. No tricks, no decorations, no costumes. I was robbed, Paws Prankster sobbed. They took everything. I looked around. This time, Paws wasn't pulling my paw. The robbers had taken everything. Right then, the phone rang. Paws blew his nose. Honk! Then answered the phone. He chatted for a minute before hanging up. Well, it looks like I wasn't the only one, he said with a sigh. Rat's authority, better cheddar and beyond, and Professor Precious Fur's priceless antiques were robbed too. How strange, I thought. 
I left Tricks for Tales and took the bus to the other side of town to do my shopping. On the bus, I sat next to a scowling mouse with a tuft of black fur on top of his head and three silver rings in his snout. He was chattering into the cell phone. Can you believe it? I heard him squeak. Last night, some rat robbed the prank factory. Now, where am I supposed to get a scary costume for Squeaky's Halloween party? I was about to tell Snout Rings he already looked pretty scary to me when we reached my stop. I jumped off the bus and headed for the farmer's market. I knew I could find a Halloween pumpkin there, but I was in for another surprise. All the pumpkins had been stolen. Instead, I saw a TV crew interviewing a farmer. He was holding up pictures of his missing produce. If you've seen these pumpkins, he squeaked, please call the police. I started thinking, first Tricks for Tails, then the Prank Factory, then all of the pumpkins in New Mouse City. It looked like someone was out to sabotage Halloween. But who? 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 Gloppy Green Slime. There was only one thing to do. I ran to the office of Hercule Poirot. As I said, Hercule is a great detective. Unfortunately, his office is less than great. In fact, it's a disaster. I knocked on the door to his flea-infested shack. Jeez, Niblets, the place was a dump. I was about to pull out my paw sanitizer when I heard a clanking sound. I looked up and a bucket filled with worms and gloppy green slime poured down on me. Help! I squeaked. The door flew open and Hercule Poirot peeked out. Is that you, Stilton? How do you like my new anti-spy trap? He asked, grinning. I pulled the bucket off my head. Oh, how do I get myself into these messes? I'm Geronimo Stilton. I'm a good mouse. I wear a helmet when I ride my bike. I cross on the green, not in between. I never litter, well, except that one time the wind whipped a cheesy chew out, wrapper out of my paws when I was driving on the freeway. What brings you here, Geronimo? Hercule asked, interrupting my thoughts. I'm ready to help you solve this Halloween mystery, I declared. Hercule picked up a suitcase near the door. He told me he was off to check out some suspicious activity. I'll call you when I know more, he squeaked. Hercule, wait, I called, but he was already gone. Open, if you dare. The morning before Halloween, I woke up early. I had a lot to do to prepare for my Halloween party. I was sweeping my stoop when I noticed a bright orange colored envelope in my mailbox. On it was written, open, if you dare. Inside was a sheet with a strange poem. You're invited to my Halloween party. Please do your best not to be tardy. I planned a great night full of games and prizes and all of the best music, rides, and surprises. Candy corn, caramel apples, and of course, lots of cheese. The food is all free. Eat as much as you please. You don't know my name, but we'll meet tomorrow night. Come to Mystery Park when the moon's shining bright. On the back of the invitation was a map on how to get to Mystery Park. It was all very strange. I mean, I'd never heard of a place called Mystery Park. I decided to make some hot cheddar. Sometimes I think more clearly with a steaming mug of hot cheddar in my paws. I was still trying to make sense of the invitation when my doorbell rang. It was my cousin Trap, my sister Thea, and my nephew Benjamin. Each of them was waving an orange envelope. Hey, Jerry Berry, I see you got the invite too, my cousin squeaked. Faber Rooney, we can all go together. I chewed my whiskers. Not so fast, Trap, I warned. How do we even know who sent this? I don't like accepting invitations from strangers. Trap guffawed. Oh, don't get your fur in a frenzy, Geronimo. Everyone's going. Plus, someone stole all the Halloween stuff in town. How else are we gonna celebrate? My cousin demanded. Then, he added, and you don't even need a costume, Cousinkins. You've already got a face like a zombie. I ignored him. Why don't you all come to my house instead? I asked. We don't need decorations to have fun on Halloween. Trap smirked. Thea rolled her eyes and Benjamin's shoulders slumped. Are you sure you don't want to go to the party, Uncle Geronimo? He asked. 
I gave in. How could I say no to my favorite nephew? What is it? That night, I couldn't get to sleep. Just when I drift off, I'd be woken up by what sounded like someone revving up the car engine right outside my window. How rude! The next morning, I stumbled out of bed. I was determined to find the late night noisemaker and give him a piece of my mind. But when I got outside, I couldn't believe my eyes. Smack in the middle of town, a gigantic tower seemed to have risen right out of the ground. It was covered by an orange tarp. A crowd stood gaping at the tower with open snouts. What is it? asked the new stand owner. Who covered it up? grumbled the male mouse. Maybe it's for Halloween, said Boris von Kackelfer, the owner of Faber Mouse Funerals. It looks like we have another mystery on our paws. A creepy kind of music. Halloween had finally arrived. What a strange day. All afternoon, a creepy, eerie kind of music could be heard throughout the town. Come to Mystery Park as soon as it's dark. You'll shiver with fright and munch treats all night. So come if you dare, I'll meet you all there. As soon as the sun went down, my family showed up on my doorstep. Get your tail in gear, Gearmeister, my cousin announced. We're off to Mystery Park. Reluctantly, I followed them outside. I was still feeling nervous about the mysterious invitation. I couldn't put my paw on it, but something just didn't seem right. As we headed for the park, I noticed a ton of rodents all going in the same direction. It seemed like the entire city would be celebrating Halloween at Mystery Park. This is going to be Fabu Mouse, I heard one rodent remark. I can't wait to try the cheese treats, another added. And it's all free, a third squeaked. Everyone is so excited. I tried to shake off my nerves. After all, it was a party. What was there to be nervous about? It was just a dark Halloween night and I was going to a party thrown by someone I'd never met. I gulped. Oh, why was I such a scaredy mouse? Just as I was about to enter the park, my cell phone rang. I looked at the number. It was Hercule Poirot. There was a lot of static on the phone. Don't sk sk oh sk sk ark sk sk dan sk sk roos he squeaked. What 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 did you say? I can't hear you. I shouted, but it was too late. The call had been disconnected. A minute later, I was pushed along by the crowd into Mystery Park. The heavy gates slammed shut behind me. It's just a party. I started to panic. Why was I feeling so trapped? Get a grip, Geronimo, I told myself. It's just a party. And what an amazing party it was. There was music and rides and food galore. Plus, everyone entering the park was given a clown mask. Sort of like a door prize, I guess. Rodents dressed in clown costumes passed out all kinds of yummy treats. I tried to relax, but I still felt uneasy. Who would throw an extravagant Halloween party and invite a whole city of strangers? And what was up with the clown costumes? I was trying to figure it out when someone clapped me on the back. And on the next page, you see a very lovely picture of the mystery park, which looks so much fun. I nearly jumped out of my fur. Hey, Jumpy Jerry, what's the matter? My cousin Trap asked me as he smirked. Then he waved a triple decker cheese sandwich in my snout. Is this free food scaring you? Next to him, Benjamin was happily munching on cheddar popcorn. Taste some, Uncle Geronimo, he offered. Thea sipped on a mega-sized milkshake. Loosen up, Jerrykins, Thea said. You look as though you're in a dentist chair about to have a root canal. I looked around and saw all my friends. Everyone was having such a wonderful time. Everyone, that is, except me. Oh, why did I have such a bad feeling? I want my mommy! Suddenly, all the lights went out in the park. Holy cheese, what was happening? I heard a rustling sound nearby. In the darkness, I could make out a pack of rodents dressed in clown costumes. They scurried through the front gate, locking it behind them. Then a scary voice rang out. 
welcome strangers to Mystery Park. I'm so glad you fell for my trap in the dark. That's right, my assistants have locked all the gates. So forget about leaving, just sit down and wait. Yes, while you were laughing and talking and eating, I surround your house for my own trick-or-treating. So sit tight, foolish mice, I'll be done soon again. I'm the best of the best at stealing your stuff. I gulped. What a nightmare! All of the rodents around me began to scamper around. Some tugged at the iron gates, but they were impossible to open. They were all bolted with enormous locks. Others tried to climb the walls, but these were no ordinary walls. They were covered with creamy whipped chocolate. It was perfect for eating, but not so great for climbing. Mice were slipping and sliding all over the place. I want out of here, a rodent fumed. I want my lawyer, another one squeaked. I want my mommy, I sobbed hysterically. Oh, I knew I should have stayed in my cozy mouse hole. How do you know how to fly a helicopter? At that moment, I heard the thunderous roar of a helicopter. I looked up. A helicopter with a clown face was flying above us. In the light of the moon, I could make out the pilot. He wore a trench coat and was waving a banana in the air. I cleaned my glasses and I looked again. Yes, it was Hercule Poirot. Who else could fly a helicopter and eat a banana at the same time? Stilton, grab hold of the hook, he yelled. I looked around. Hook, hook. What was Hercule talking about? A minute later, a huge steel hook dropped from the helicopter and bonked me on the head. Youch. I squeezed my eyes shut, grabbed it, and hung on for dear life. I yelled down to Thea, Shap, and Benjamin. Don't worry! I'll be back soon to get everyone out! With a jerk, I was reeled up into the plane. Hercule shoved a headset onto my head so we could communicate with each other over the roar of the engine. Soon, we were flying high over the park. The wind was like a cyclone whipping my whiskers all over the place. I made a mental note to remember to book an appointment to Cliff Rat, my barber. It would take weeks to untangle this fur. Just as the helicopter took a nosedive and I let out an ear-piercing squeak. Uh, um, Hercule? Uh, do, do, do you know how, how to, to fly a helicopter? I stammered. I stole a quick glance at my friend. He had a funny smile on his face. Don't be silly, Stilton. I've definitely flown a helicopter before, he grinned. Maybe not a real one, but I've had loads of toy airplanes when I was young. Moldy mozzarella! I was a passenger in a helicopter flown by a mouse whose only experience as a pilot was playing with tiny plastic planes. I began to feel faint. Tiny dots of light swarmed in front of my eyes. Well, maybe that was because it was a nightmare and we were hurling past lots of stars. But get the point. I was a bunch of nerves! We've got to rescue our friends, I shrieked at Hercule. But he shook his head. First, we need to find Chuckles, he said. Uh, Ch Chuckles? Who was my friend talking about? Maybe the altitude was affecting his brain cells. I was about to suggest we head for the nearest hospital when Hercule began to explain. It seemed the thief who called himself Chuckles had decided to rip off New Mouse City. First, he stole all of the Halloween supplies in town. Then, he built Mystery Park and invited everybody to a party. After everyone had gathered, he locked the gates and began looting all the houses. He's got an army of mice helping him and they're all dressed like clowns, Hercule finished. I was stunned. So that was what my friend had called to warn me about? Too bad I hadn't been able to hear him. Hmm. Oh, and one more thing, Hercule added. This helicopter? It's Chuckle's private helicopter. Can you imagine how mad he's going to be when he found out I stole it? At that moment, I heard a sound more horrifying than a hissing cat, more petrifying than paw nails on a chalkboard. It was the roar of helicopters, smaller clown helicopters, and they were headed right for us. I really deserve a little snack. We're being followed, I shrieked in a panic as the clown copters grew closer, but Hercule just laughed. That mouse loves a challenge. With a gleeful squeak, he yanked on the control stick, then began doing somersaults in midair. A wave of nausea hit me. I grabbed an air stick bag. Um, weak stomach, Geronimo? Hercule smirked. 
I couldn't answer. I was turning as green as a stalk of celery. Did I mention that I get air sick and car sick and seasick? Basically, all types of sick. Oh, and I also get sick when I watch the clothes tumbling around in the dryer at the squeaky clean laundry mat. But that's another story. Even though my stomach was hurting, I still noticed the strange activity going on in the streets far below. Clowns were everywhere. They were ransacking the city, houses, stores, banks. The clowns were stealing everything. Luckily, Hercule was able to lose the clown helicopters that were chasing us. Another job? Well done, he congratulated himself. Then he pulled a banana out of his coat pocket. I really deserve a little snack. <laughs> he announced as he shoved the fruit in his mouth and flipped the peel over his shoulder. But the peel got stuck under the control panel. Oops, Hercule muttered. Two minutes later, the helicopter began sputtering in the air. I looked out the window and saw the sea under us. The waves were getting nearer and nearer and nearer. Splash! Before I could scream, we hit the water. The helicopter began to sink. We were doomed! I watched in horror as the helicopter began to fill up with water. Hercule was passed up on my side. We were doomed. I saw my life flash before my eyes. My first step, my first squeak. My first chocolate cheesy chew. Yum, I love cheesy chews. I promised myself if I made it out of this alive, I'd treat myself to one whole box. Or maybe two. But there was no time to think about cheesy chews now. I had to think fast. I knew that the external water pressure would prevent me from opening the helicopter door. So I waited until the entire helicopter filled up with water. Then I grabbed Hercule by the tail and pushed open the door. The water was icy and it was so dark at the bottom of the sea. Above me, the light from the moon made the waves shimmer. I swam desperately towards the surface. My lungs were about to explode, but I had to keep going for my friend, for my family, and okay, I admit, for those delicious chocolate cheesy chews. Finally, I reached the surface. I did it! I squeaked. Fish food! Right then, Hercule came to. What, what, what happened? What, what are we doing in the water? What's for dinner? He babbled. Before I could respond, I noticed lights on shore. The clowns were looking for us. We hid under a pier. Too bad there was a sewer nearby. The stench was unbelievable. Footsteps thundered above us. The clowns stood on the pier. Their evil laughs filled the dark night. That copter sank like a brick, we heard one say. Those rodents are fish food now, another giggle. Let's tell the boss. He's at the clown tower. He just got rid of the tarp that was on top of the building. Hercule nudged me. So that's what the mysterious cloth-covered skyscraper was all about. It was the thief's headquarters. As soon as the clowns left, we splashed out of the water. It felt good to be on dry land, but what was that awful smell? I sniffed the air, then it hit me. The stench was coming from my own fur. Putrid cheese puffs, I smell like a sewer rat. An army of clowns. I was dying to wash off my fur in a nice relaxing bubble bath, but there was no time to waste. We had work to do. We had to find Chuckles before he left town with all of our stuff. Just then, I remembered the clown masks we had been given at Mystery Park. I had one for me and one for Benjamin. Now, I pulled both masks from my pocket. Let's put on these clown masks so no one will notice us, I told Hercule. We headed toward the center of the city. When we arrived, I choked back tears. What a dreadful sight. An army of clowns marched through the streets, stealing everything. Jewelry, television sets, video equipment, computers, food, and clothing. They dragged huge sacks of money from the new Mouse City Bank. They emptied everything into clown cars. With a heavy heart, I watched as the thieves carried priceless artwork out of the National Museum. They even stole the Mona Mousa! Then they marched up the stairs to the Rodents Gazette. I couldn't watch anymore. What kind of mild mouse would want to ransack a whole city? I whispered to Hercule. As we headed toward the tower, Hercule gave me the lowdown on Chuckles. Chuckles, who is he? An evil clown? What does he do? Commands an army of evil clowns to rob Mouse Island. His dream? To become hilariously rich. 
unusual features. He lives in an extremely tall tower shaped like a clown. His obsession? He collects clown shoes. His secret? He loves to knit. His strong point? He's very funny and can fool anyone, even his own grandmother. His weak point? He is very sentimental and sobs like a newborn at sad stories. What are you waiting for? At last, we reached the clown tower. I saw a line of clown carts coming and going. The clowns were piling up the stolen goods and heading back for more. Hmm. How can we get close to the tower without getting noticed? What we need is another plane. Hercule suggested. No one can grab us while we're just in the air. Just then, I saw a three-wheeled contraption attached to a huge clown-faced kite. It's a motorized hang glider, Hercule squealed. And look, those two fools are guarding it. What? Luck. Quietly, we scampered over to the plane. The two guards were playing ring around the rosy with each other. When they finished, they collapsed. That was fun, said one of the guards, but now I'm tired. Guess the boss will mind if we take a little snooze, said the other guard. A minute later, the two guards were snoring like babies. Hercule sprang into action. He raced over to the hang glider and turned on the motor. What are you waiting for, Geronimo? He squeaked excitedly. Climb on! Suddenly, I realized what I was about to do. My paws began to shake uncontrollably. Um, Hercule, do you know how to fly this thing? I asked. Hercule grinned gleefully. Don't be silly, Geronimo. Of course I know how to fly a glider, he said. Then he added, maybe not a real one, but I flew loads of tiny paper gliders when I was a little mouseling. My fur turned pale. Whirl! Hercule cried as the glider rose and dipped into the sky like a seasick pigeon. Hercule took a banana out of his pocket. I deserve a little snack, he announced. I gulped. I wonder if it's possible to die from fright. The Clown Tower. The hang glider lifted us higher and higher into the air. I chewed my whiskers to stop myself from screaming. Then way down below, we spotted it. An immense statue of a clown rose from the ground. The Clown Tower. A flower on top of the statue's hat spun around at regular intervals. It was a radar detector. It looked like Chuckles was serious about keeping away trespassers. I closed my eyes as Hercule plunked the hang glider down on the edge of the statue. Phew! The radar dismissed us. I stepped gingerly away from the glider, trying not to look down. Did I mention I'm afraid of heights? Meanwhile, Hercule was busy munching bananas. He threw the peels on the ground. I followed behind him, picking them up. One thing you should know about Hercule, he's the biggest litter bug on the block. There was a small door on the ear of the statue. We opened it. Did I mention that I really, really hate small spaces and the dark? I am without a doubt the biggest scaredy mouse on Mouse Island. The door led to a long, dark flight of stairs. It was so spooky. I was scared out of my mind. We crept down the stairs as quiet as mice. Then I guess it's a really cute graphic of the uh, tower. The 113th floor. We came to an elevator. On the wall was a map of the tower with an inscription, you're on the 113th floor. I began to feel trapped. We, we, we have to get, I started to squeak, but Hercule interrupted me. Yes, we have to get chuckles, he said. Hercule nudged me into the elevator and the door slid shut behind me. He pushed a button that read 100th floor chuckles office. I wanted to cry. I wanted to scream. I wanted to run to the restful rodent for a massage with cheese scented oils. We have to get out of here, I whispered, but it was too late. Ding! The elevator had arrived on the 100th floor. The doors opened into Chuckles' office. I knew it was you! Chuckles' office looked just like the inside of a circus tent. There was a huge stage and lots of brightly colored lights. And in the center of the stage sat Chuckles. He wore white gloves, a yellow wig, and a little red hat. 
His blue pants were super baggy, and his yellow tie was dotted with purple polka dots. His black shoes were so oversized, I wondered how he managed to walk without falling flat on his face. We watched as Chuckles picked up something orange from a big orange pile in the corner. What was Chuckles doing? We crept closer. He was carving a pumpkin! When he finished, he looked at it with satisfaction. Then he sang a little song in a high-pitched voice. Oh, this Halloween is the best. I'll be richer than all of the rest. I'll steal all the money. Oh, aren't I funny? This Halloween is just the best. What a rot in the low down, no good rat, I fumed to myself. He had stolen from all the good mice of New Mouse City. Hadn't anyone ever told him that stealing is wrong? Without thinking, I let out a loud snort. Uh-oh. The clown heard me and screamed. Who's there? Show your face in my place. We approached timidly, our clown mask still on our face. He looked at us suspiciously and yelled, What's with the clothes? Why are you in those? Hercule spoke right up. Chief, uh, we took our uniforms to the cleaners, he offered. But Chuckles didn't seem to be buying it. He stared at us skeptically. Then he pointed to me and boasted. You're just like Stilton, the newspaper mouse. He thinks he's so smart but I'll steal his whole house. I groaned inwardly. I pictured the clown army ransacking my house and making off with my precious antique cheese rinds and my Encyclopedia Britannica collection. Then Chuckles pointed his paw in Hercule's face and said with a smirk, and you're just like Paul Rat, the detective that's who. He's such a big slob, he belongs in a zoo. I could hear Hercule gashing his teeth. A minute later, he whipped off his mask. I'll tell you who belongs in a zoo clown face, Hercule shouted. Chuckle streaked. I knew it was you. Then he jumped to his feet. It took him a little while because of those oversized shoes. Watch my show. I shivered. What would Chuckles do to us now? Chuckles let out a cruel laugh. His nose lit up when he was excited. Or maybe he had a sinus infection. It was hard to tell. He put his paws around us. Then he said, I'll let you both go if you watch my show. His show. Chuckles challenged us to a contest. He would do his act, and if we did not laugh, he would let us go. That sounded easy. After all, I considered myself an intellectual mouse with a sophisticated sense of humor. Silly old clown jokes didn't work on me. We agreed. Chuckles began. First, he jumped into a little car. He pressed the horn and the water squirted him in his face. Next, he pretended to trip and smack his snout on the floor. He turned out the light, then he pulled a glow-in-the-dark skull out of the hat. He made a thousand funny faces. He sat on a whoopee cushion. He threw a pepper bomb that made us both sneeze. Then he threw a stink bomb. And he made a fake spider jump from his pocket. Finally, Chuckles took a giant rubber hammer and smacked Hercule in the head. My friend giggled. Then he began to laugh. I couldn't believe it. How could Hercule fall for the old rubber hammer trick? It was so silly. It was so ridiculous. Then Chuckles hits me in the head with the hammer. I burst out laughing. I couldn't help it. It was too funny. I won, Chuckles declared. Poor Strawberry. I was crushed. I stopped laughing immediately and began to cry. Get a grip, Geronimo, Hercule ordered. I've got an idea. He told Chuckles he was challenging him to another contest. If I can make you cry, then I win, he said. Chuckles hesitated. What's the matter, clown face? You're not chicken, are you? Hercule teased. That did it. The clown rolled his eyes and said, I accept your dare, like I really care. Hercule winked at me, then he began his story. Once upon a time, there was a teeny tiny mouse who lived in a teeny tiny house deep in the woods. One day, the teeny tiny mouse was out looking for food when he spotted a huge red strawberry. He pushed and he pulled and he dragged the strawberry all the way back to his house. Then he was so tired, he took a nap, dreaming of strawberry pie. But while he was sleeping, a big hungry wolf came by. Oh, what a delicious looking combo meal, he said. And so he opened his great big mouth 
and gobbled up the strawberry and the teeny tiny mouse in one giant gulp. The end. Chuckles' lips began to quiver. Then two big tears slid down his cheeks. Then he rolled on the ground, sobbing uncontrollably and blowing his nose in his polka dotted handkerchief. Poor strawberry! Poor mouse! He cried. I nodded, wiping my tears from my own eyes. What can I say? I'm a sensitive mouse too. Meanwhile, Hercule made Chuckles tell us the secret password that opened the locks to the mystery park. But just as we were about to leave, Chuckles ran to a small round room filled with levers and switches. He hit a few buttons, then the whole room began to rumble. You will be mine! What was happening? Was it a tornado? Was it an earthquake? Just then, I realized that the noise was coming from the inside. The whole tower shook. Then we rose into the air. Yes, the clown tower had turned into a giant flying machine. Chuckles began to sing a little song. You can't get away from me. I need some friends, you see. And you will be mine until the end of time. Yes, you'll keep me company. Wow, Chuckles Cheese really had slipped off his cracker. <laughs> Next to me, Hercule stamped his foot. We don't want to go with you, he shouted. You can't force someone to be your friend. Annoyed, Chuckles pressed a button. In a flash, two windows on which we were leaning opened. Too bad for you, he yelled. A minute later, we found ourselves hurling into space. Hmm, maybe being forced to travel the world with a crazed clown wasn't such a bad idea after all, I thought, as my life flashed before my eyes. But then I heard something snap. Miraculously, a yellow parachute opened above us. Good thing I listened to Granny Iron Whiskers this morning when she reminded me to take my shoe. Hercule chuckled. Yes, sirree, I'll never leave home without it. Party in my house. We landed outside the giant gates to Mystery Park. I punched in the password Chuckles gave us and the gates swung open. Our friends swarmed out. Benjamin gave me a giant hug. I knew you'd save us, Uncle Geronimo, he squeaked. Too bad we didn't get to celebrate Halloween this year. I sighed. But then I had an idea. Who says Halloween can only be one night of the year? Let's have a Halloween party at my house tomorrow night, I told my nephew. As my grandmother says. The next day, I worked like a mad mouse, getting things ready for the party. I cleaned my mouse hole from top to bottom. Then I made my own Halloween decorations. I drew pictures on pumpkins, ghosts, and bats on construction paper. Then I cut them out and hung them all over my house. I filled a glass pitcher with punch and labeled it vampire juice. Before I knew it, it was time for my party to begin. I wrapped myself in toilet paper. Just as I finished, the doorbell rang. The guests streamed into my house. I welcomed a monster, an alien, a zombie, and more. I must admit, some of the costumes were pretty scary. I had to keep reminding myself that they were all my friends. Still, my knees shook every time I passed by Frankenstein, and Count Dracula's fangs were positively fur raising. I was trying to calm my nerves when Hercule Poirot showed up. He was dressed in his usual yellow trench coat and hat. Where is your costume? I asked. Hercule scratched his head. This is my costume, he said. I'm dressed. Like a detective. Then he added, as Granny Iron Whiskers says, always be yourself. I snickered. <laughs> um, Hercule, I don't think she was talking about Halloween costumes. Hercule bristled. Are you making fun of my grandmother, Geronimo? He accused. I'll have you know, my grandmother is one of the smartest rodents I know. She gives the best advice, like never talk to strangers and don't take any wooden nickels. And if you're happy and you know it, clap your paws. Well, the last one is actually the title of a song she used to sing, but you get the idea. My grandmother is amazing. He kissed the photo of his grandmother that he kept in his wallet. Then he looked around the room. Speaking of amazing Geronimo, he squeaked. When are you going to set me up with that amazing sister of yours? I sighed. All my friends love my sister Thea. She is smart, beautiful, and super adventurous. 
The thing is, my sister has so many boyfriends, she can't keep them all straight. Still, I felt bad for her guilt, so I told him I'd see what I could do. Great, her Phil shouted happily. How could I repay you? I know, I'll set you up with my cousin, Rutella Porat. You'll love her. What squeaking? Before I could stop him, Hercule pulled out his cell phone and called his cousin. Rutella, what squeaking? It's your cousin, Hercule, he began. Listen, I want you to meet my friend Geronimo Stilton. You're gonna love him. He's not brave or athletic. In fact, I guess you can say he's an uncoordinated scaredy mouse. That's why I thought of you. You can whip him into shape, maybe take him to your weightlifting class or show him your karate moves. You're a black belt, right? You two would be great together. Just don't break his tailbone like you did your last boyfriend's. I chewed my whiskers. <laughs> Weightlifting, k, k karate, broken tailbone. Oh, how do I get myself into these situations? I started to tell Hercule that I planned on being busy for the next 10 million years, but he ignored me. It's all set, Geronimo. You call Thea and we'll all go out together tomorrow night. This is perfect. Just think of it. If I married your sister and you married my cousin, we'd be related. Wouldn't that be incredible? He squeaked happily. I gulped. It would be incredible, all right. An incredible nightmare. Still, what could I say? Hercule was so excited. He looked like he was about to explode. So I plastered a smile on my snout and just nodded. After all, I didn't want to make a scene in the middle of my Halloween party. <sighs> Later that night, I collapsed into bed and fell asleep instantly. Can you guess what I dreamed about? I'll tell you. I dreamed about chuckles and stolen pumpkins and one crazy Halloween I will never forget. And that is the end.